Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to Thrash Reviews, where yours truly, Thrash Maniac 99, continues to review upcoming hard rock and heavy metal albums in the calendar year of 2016. And <coughs> today, or tonight, I should say, we are reviewing quite possibly what was the biggest album for rock and metal that came out yesterday, and that's the newest release from California alternative post-metal legends Deftones and their album Gore. Now, Deftones is a band that has had a long-lasting legacy going back the last 20 years. They originally started out as a new metal band out of that same scene as bands like Korn, Cold Chamber, and then eventually Slipknot and bands along those lines. But then once they released their album White Pony back in 2000, they evolved out of it into a traditional alternative metal band with some um, avant-garde metal influences and some post-metal influences with the very cool soundscapes of shoegaze influence coming into the music and experimenting with other genres including some progressive music, some traditional alternative rock, some trip-hop, some electronic influences, all in their core alternative metal, avant-garde metal, and post-metal sound. So that, that's the way they've been playing for the last at least 16 years, going back to White Pony. So this is the band's uh, ninth album, I believe, which is Gore, and we're about to see how this album stands up to the rest. The first track I want to talk about is um, Acid Hologram, and right off the bat you're getting all these real atmospheric layers over top of the music that just kind of makes the music feel <clears throat> like it's taking you on a journey, like your mind is somewhere else. It's like as if you're watching a movie and you're just lost in that world for a good two hours. <clears throat> That's the feeling I get with this song as well as this record, that it just takes a life of its own. And it's like once you listen to it, you're hooked on it for the rest of the listen and you start to appreciate what the band is trying to do. Chino Marino's voice on this song as well as throughout the album is very much esque of, say, Maynard James Keenan of Tool, and really Deftones have been kind of taking influence from bands like Tool, putting some of that into their sound, and, and I love the way how certain reviewers such as Cover Killer Nation put it when they did their album in 2012, Koinoi Yokan, that it sounded like as if the band rented a hotel room and fucked Maynard James Keenan. Because, like, and it is apparent that some of the influences of the Tool and even Pussifer sides of Maynard James Keenan are apparent on this record. And with Acid Hologram, it's just the first part of a long journey. The next track I want to talk about is Hearts and Wires, and this is the longest track of the album at about five and a half minutes. And this song was probably their most progressive song on the album because the structure of the song did not follow a traditional format. There was a lot of diversity going on and continuing that theme of dramatic atmospheric soundscapes that just takes your head on a journey. And this song had a lot more of a little bit of a darkness behind it. And there are certain songs that have a real dark feel to it that just get you mesmerized and thinking, hmm, I wonder what the Chino was thinking about in his lyrics. And <clears throat> it's like one of the grand mysteries of the band that no one really ever knows. It's like, what does he think about when it comes to lyrics like this? So... Great track. And then the final track I want to touch on is uh, is El Miral, or La Mirals, however you would pronounce it. The second longest track of the record at just five minutes in length. And it was just similar to Hearts and Wires, only except it was a little bit more on the soft end of the scale, where they really took, like I keep saying, those ideas of the atmospheric soundscapes to a whole new level of um, of beauty. This had a beauty to beautiful feel to it, whereas on Hearts and Wires it was a little bit more about the intensity 
this song's first half was really melodic, and then the second half, it gets a little heavier. And that's really what you could describe this album, is a perfect balance between soft beauty, melody, and some intense, uh, brutal heaviness within the music, something that Deftones has been known for throughout their whole career. So overall with this record, the first half of the record from Prayers and Triangles all the way to the track Petura Inf Infamanti was very strong. The first half of this record was extremely strong, probably one of the strongest first halves of an album all year round. However, the second half, there was a couple tracks that I wasn't 100% into, Tracks like uh, Xenon and uh, the title track, Gore. Those were the cup two tracks on the album I just did not really care to, to care for too much. They weren't bad songs by any stretch of the means, but it wasn't anywhere near as the rest of the tracks on the album. And that's just one man's opinion. So overall with this record, don't uh, Gore by Deftones, I give this album an 84 out of 100. This was a really solid release. Ton of great, tons of great material on this track. If you're into the atmospheric, avant-garde, post-metal with some of the alternative metal components thrown in, this will definitely be for you. However, I was hoping for a little bit more ambition on this record, and maybe their next record could be when the ambition really kicks in, and maybe they could be on route to creating their greatest album ever, though who knows if it could be better than White Pony. So anyways, 84 out of 100 for Deftones' score. Thank you for watching this episode of Thrash Reviews. Peace out, and have a good Saturday night.